938 Live. This is Talkback. Thanks for joining us on Talkback. I'm Bharati Jagdish with Andre Achak. Now, are you guilty of loading up your plate but not finishing your food at a buffet, of over-ordering food at restaurants and from caterers? Almost 800,000 tons of food was wasted in Singapore last year. That's an about 13% increase from 2012, the steepest rise, by the way, in six years. Wastage of cooked food and expired packaged products grew 42% from 2007. If you think about it, this actually outstrips our 17.7% national population growth. So what's really going on here? Are we nonchalant about wasting food and why? Uh, do you ask restaurants and eateries to pack the food that you can't finish or do you just not bother? Have you witnessed food being wasted by FNB outlets? Call us 669-11938. Of course, you can also talk to us on Facebook, Official 938 Live. Now, the National Environment Agency, or NEA, will be conducting a survey to look at how Singaporeans shop, cook, eat and have their, of course, uh, catering habits that all may lead to wastage in an effort to cut the growing amount of food waste. Now, the survey is expected to be completed by next month. We'll also look at the types of food that's being wasted and why they're being thrown out. Now, it's hoped that the information, of course, gathered will help the Food Wastage Reduction Working Group to better design its outreach program and refine its target audiences. Formed in 2012 by the Inter-Ministry Committee on Food Security, the working group is jointly chaired by the NEA and Agri-Food and Veterinary Authority and includes representatives from agencies such as the Economic Development Board and the Ministry of the Environment and Water Resources. The working group has also engaged food manufacturers, hawkers, hotel operators, retailers and non-governmental organisations to better understand the problem. Experts say the problem exists in every stage of the supply chain. The food manufacturing and catering industries, F&B outlets and hotels, of course, can do more to prepare just enough food and offer a variety of portion sizes to customers or encourage customers not to over-order. Some suggestions to cut food waste uh, include working with charities to give away food to the needy. Uh, recycling food waste is also an option, but the rate of recycling in Singapore remains low. And according to the National Environment Agency, only about 13% of total food waste was recycled last year. This is up from the 1% the year before, but it's well still considered quite low. We're joined today by Kavik Kumar Muruganathan. He is from the Singapore Environment Council. Thank you so much, Kavik, for joining us today. First of all, we talked earlier about how some people might be quite nonchalant about wasting food, leaving it behind, uh, throwing out food, so on and so forth. Why should people care, though, about this? I think uh, it's important that we uh, do not take our food security for granted. I think that's uh, with the growing affluence and you know different uh, varieties of food uh, coming into Singapore. I think we are spoiled for choices, so uh, we tend to take it for granted. But it's important that uh, we pay particular attention to this because eventually it's the amount of waste generated uh, which is significant. And as you shared earlier, I think the numbers are increasing. So. I think we need to take a bit of ownership in the food waste that we generate and how we dispose or recycle or reuse the food. This has an, a great environmental impact as well, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, uh, it's all going to waste. I mean, uh, there's also a better way of putting good use of the food waste, you know, in other countries they've tried and tested various ways to recycle the food waste they generate and also reduce their food waste. So I think we can learn a lot from the experiences from other countries as well. Mm, we'll talk more about that in just a while. Let's see what lessons we can learn from those experiences. But based on what we know right now, who are the biggest culprits of food wastage? Because as we also mentioned, the problem exists at every stage of the supply chain. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, right now, we don't have really uh, accurate data to show who exactly are the biggest culprits because what we have is a whole lump sum number for food waste. So I think the problem also lies that we don't segregate the food waste yet, so our waste yet. So uh, that's where we have problems identifying who the real culprits are. Because the food waste is alongside all the other waste yes, that you generate. Yes, so it's essential that we... Uh, 
uh, if you're aware that you know uh, NEA has made the uh, mandatory waste reporting in uh, 2014, so I think that's a this good step. This involves about 250 shopping malls and hotels, right? Yeah, so that's a good step. So that will identify hotspots that they need to target, and then they could you know probably expand the program to manufacturers of food, retailers, and then we can go on to the consumer level. So that enable, enables us to find out where the real issue lies. But I think generally the biggest culprits will still be uh, F&B outlets, hotels, mm. caterers. It's the downstream consumer. Yes, correct. Because we tend to over-cater to mm. meet the needs of mm. you know an unexpected number of guests. And most of the time, we do not end up finishing the food. Mm. And if you're aware, also NEA has guidelines for co- food consumption. That's yeah, correct. you've got to yeah, do it within a consume few hours. It within four hours. Yeah. So that uh, also results in a lot of wastage and people go on to throw their food after that. Mm. So while that is supposed to help and ensure our health consuming that food, how can, you know, I mean, policies also help reduce food wastage? Okay, I think in uh, the UK, I think they have a very good uh, policy in place because they have a landfill directive that pushes waste away from landfill. So they have they have no choice but to use, uh, to look at alternatives to use their waste. And they're also guided by the UE directive to uh, push away biodegradable waste from the landfill. So uh, regulation-wise, I think uh, a a good example would be to follow what is happening in the UK. But I think what we can do in Singapore would be to make the available funding for companies and manufacturers to recycle their food waste and Mm. also provide incentives and create more awareness on schemes and technology or R&D that they can tap to reduce their food waste or even recycle the food waste. Let's talk about recycling in just a moment, but we want to hear from you as well. 669-11938. How much food did you waste yesterday or this morning at breakfast? Call us 669-11938. Thanks for joining us on Talk Back on 938 Live. Talking today about whether or not you are guilty of wasting food, over ordering food at restaurants and from caterers, over buying from the supermarkets. Almost 800,000 tons of food was wasted here last year. We're talking here about a 13% rise from 2012. It's the steepest rise in six years. So, what's going on? Call us and let us know. Kavit Kumar Muruganathan from the Singapore Environment Council joins us now. By the way, the NEA will be conducting a survey to look at how we shop, cook, eat and cater food that might lead to wastage. The idea is to design some programs that would help us do better in this arena. Now, Kavik, let's talk about the reasons behind the rising numbers. Some businesses I've spoken to have said that uh, it is consumer behaviour that shapes how they treat food. So tell me more about that. What are some of the reasons in that arena? I think that's true also because, uh, for example, let's take our supermarkets. You know, We always tend to purchase uh, goods when the shelf is fully stocked as compared to a shelf that is sparsely stocked. Mm. So it's sometimes, it's sometimes just down to consumer behavior and preferences. The same goes for buffets as well, you know. We usually tend to take something from a tray that is fully filled and we also have a preference for, you know, uh, trying various kinds of food and sometimes when we don't like it, we have no choice but to dispose of it. So sometimes it just boils down to our attitudes, our perception towards certain things and how visually appeasing or appealing food can be. Yeah. Now the NEA survey is aimed at finding out about some of these habits and attitudes so that it can target programs, uh, anti-food waste programs more effectively. Based on what we know right now though, what would you say would be a good approach to tackle some of the problems? I think it also uh, it is important that we start from school because I think that's uh, where a lot of education takes place. So I think uh, education on food waste, food recycling processes and techniques will be important to be inculcated to students. So then, uh, you know, this will be habitualized in them and they will be able to take this back home to share with their parents, their caregivers, you know, their family. So that message propagates and then, you know, the next time when they eat and or have a meal at home there you they, there, there they go you know say no mom dad finish up your meal <laughs> that would that, be good. Yeah, that's yeah. something that's reverse right. mentoring it's called yeah, 669-11938 right. is our number sam joins us now hi sam good morning sam would you please uh, turn down the volume of your radio set so we can hear you better uh, uh, my radio is off okay good thank you go ahead now okay um well, i think that food waste picture most important is to start from young from the 
parents' education. Very important. Because when you're young, the parents will instill and inculcate this value that uh, people are hunger over the world, are hungry. You know? There are people starving. We should not waste food. That's number one. Number two, if you take uh, all types of food, uh, you get uh, more nutrition as compared to people who are selective and, and waste, waste, waste of uh, food. Thank you very much for that, Sam. Really appreciate it. Sam, too, calling for more education. In fact, uh, influencing your children that way is one way of doing it. Kavik, of course, suggested that kids learn about these things more often in school and perhaps they could influence the people around them, including the adults, of course. Stay with us on 938 Live. We'll continue talking about this in just a moment. Do you see the importance of cutting back on food wastage? Are we just nonchalant about all of this because of rising affluence? We'll talk to you in just a while. Thanks for joining us on Talkback on 938 Live, talking today about food wastage in Singapore. About 800,000 tonnes of food was wasted in Singapore last year. We're talking about a 13% rise from 2012. Now, this, of course, has major environmental repercussions as well. Are you guilty of loading up your plate, not finishing your food, uh, throwing food out just because it's reached its expiration date? Now, I know that uh, people tend to be overly careful about those expiration dates when it comes to packaged food. We're joined today by Kavik Kumar Muruganathan. He is from the Singapore Environment Council. Kavik, we talked earlier about how businesses need to do a lot more here. However, they have said themselves that part of part of the reason why they do the things they do in terms of throwing out food so on and so forth is because of customer perceptions consumer perceptions let's discuss this a little bit more what aspects of consumer perceptions you think need to be changed in order for businesses to be able to operate better as well for instance i mentioned food with expiration dates how yeah, kiasu uh, we tend to be about that I sometimes think, i think it is uh, also a perception that we tend to want the best of the best so I think quality is very important to us mm. uh, you know how which well, is perfectly reasonable yeah yes. and uh, and yes because I think we are trained in that school of thought we always want the best for example you know fruits you know even there's a ding or a small rot at the side we do not want it you know when you go to the supermarkets we make sure that the fruit is perfect you know physically and you know uh, you know, there's no dings, there's no rots, and anything. Even though the ding wouldn't really, yeah, totally be, destroy your enjoyment of the food. Yes, but exactly. one could say I'm paying good money for this. I should yeah. get the best. Yeah, so it's it's the perception. You know, we want the best. We want it value for money, as we always want. And yeah, so that is something that propagates to various aspects of food you know not just buying from the supermarkets but also you know you know when you order food outside at your fmb retail outlets you know sometimes the food is not as tasty as it should be Mm. but you know we we still expect the best and then we so what are you trying to say really that we need to lower our expectations moderate our expectations how i think it's a bit of both i think sometimes we need to you know, uh, we need to change our mindsets a bit, you know, to not want, you know, I think we should also uh, tend to look at the situation in other countries sure. where, where people, are, they do not even have enough food to get through the, the day. So sometimes to, you know, uh, compare ourselves with our counterparts in the rest of the world, I think that's also important. I think people forget also that consumers play a part in particularly like food handling, fruits and vegetables. Uh, Many a time, if you go to the uh, market or the supermarkets, you see people, you know, putting their fingers or their their nails into the skin of an orange. They're testing the fruit. Yeah, and then they're just squeezing it. And of course, you're not going to buy that, right, eventually. And of course, they'll go off with their uh, pack, but leave others all these uh, dings. So, I mean, yeah, people have to really rethink how All they right. handle All right, let's food. hear from Miss Lee right now. Hi, Miss Lee. Hello. Miss Lee, good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, just, I was listening to all that. Um, actually, home consumption, I don't think there's much waste. It's more on the F&B industry. Mm. We did just talk about, though, how the F&B industry, perhaps in some cases, is put in a position where they have to waste food because of consumer tastes and consumer preferences. What do you think of that link? Um, 
like just now, uh, earlier on, a gentleman was saying poking fruit, poking food, fish, and all at the market. Mm. It is so true. Yeah. I mean, I personally did tell those old ladies it's a um, a set a mindset which mm. has to be changed. That means these people must tell those people that I'm giving you fresh things. You take it. Mm. You know and. Right. Thank you very much for that, Miss Lee. Unfortunately, the background uh, noise is quite loud, but we got your point and we do appreciate it. Give us a ring, 669-11938. Now, Kathak, you mentioned Britain's example earlier, things that we can learn from Britain. Let's go into greater detail about what exactly they do in order to cut food waste. Apparently, they manage to slash food waste by one-fifth. That's a very good figure. What do they do that we can do in Singapore as well? I think there could be alternative use of uh, food waste. I mean, food waste put to good use. For mm. example, we can also study the idea of uh, biogasification of food and also, you know, uh, digesting food and then probably... To the layman, what does that mean? It's basically, uh, you know, uh, using food and changing it to another alternative form of energy. Ah. Yeah. So this would be industrial, yeah, an industrial, industrial application. Yeah, and also we could probably sometimes treat it within a house because some houses in the US, they have grinders and then the food gets That's grind right. and chopped and it mm. goes into the sweet system and then it gets treated together with the sweet sludge. Ah. In yeah. fact, there is an, a food recycling company here. It's called EcoWiz and we spoke yeah. to them the last time that we talked about food waste. But on a day-to-day basis, it would help so much if so much food were wasted in the first place, right? Uh, so when it comes to systemic things like, for instance, how supermarkets are overly careful about expiration dates, so on and so forth, what's your advice there? I think it's important that we nip the problem in the bud. I think, as you said, I think the key issue is food waste. I mean, we shouldn't even be talking about food recycling in the first place. So I think we should try to reduce that food waste play, mm. firstly. And uh, that, as uh, people have shared, I think it's all down to do with our mindsets, our attitudes, our culture, and also not taking our food security for a ride. Mm. So sometimes I think we're also caught in a dil- dilemma because there's so much of varieties out there and, you know, we we are exposed to the best of the best of food. So we are, in a way, <laughs> culpable. Spoiled for choice. Yeah, spoiled mm. for choice and, you know, just culpable ourselves. Now, yeah. earlier this year, it was announced that about 250 malls and hotels will have to do that waste reporting thing. Uh, they have to report waste and recycling data as well to the National Environment Agency. But this starts next year. This includes actually the weight of waste that they throw away, the way the waste is reused, recycled and broken down by type as well. Paper, metals and food is one of the categories. They also have to come up with waste reduction plans. How do you think all of this will really help? I think it's a good step. I think it's the right step in the right direction. I think um, by doing this, I think basically they are having a very tabled breakdown of the food waste that they generate and then they can see what is the highest (laughs) contributors of waste. Is it food? Is it paper waste? And then they can zoom in to find solutions to that, you know, whether they need to engage a recycling company to recycle the food. You mentioned earlier that maybe funding for recycling services could be offered to establishments. However, shouldn't establishments be able to do this with their own funds? Yes, you're right. But I think there are also the uh, smaller establishments that we need to take into consideration. I think uh, NEA has its 3R funding available. And I think uh, some hotels under the Singapore Hotel Association have tapped under the scheme. If I'm not wrong, around four hotels have tapped under the scheme to do food recycling on site. But I think the awareness is still not there. I think many small establishments, organizations, SMEs are not aware of this. So they tend to think that, hey, there's no solution. Also, the problem lies with for smaller organizations is, you know, uh, economies of scale. You know, if I'm going to invest so much of cost in this, then I'm going to lose and cut down on my productivity on my day to day operations. So overall, it does not make sense for me to do this. So So maybe as a start, more awareness could be built around the funding schemes that are already in place. Yes, exactly. I think uh, more can be done on in terms of publicizing it on various publicity platforms, the internet and you know, just doing roadshows going down to that. 
Should there be fines for those that uh, for those that waste more? I think it's in it might work, but I think we need to balance. You know, as the carrot and stick approach goes, I think we need to strike a fine balance. If you have fines, then um, there might there must be proper avenues available, readily available for food recycling and food reduction. So if you don't have the avenues, then people would say yeah. fines are going to be unreasonable. Right. Uh, Okay, on an individual basis, right? How how can uh, individuals take the right steps to to mitigate wastage on the on the on the whole? I think it's simple. I think don't overstock. I think order what you can eat, choose what you can eat, mm. and I think also I think we should be more open to food donations because sometimes people you know are wary of liabilities, brand guidelines when they do food donations, but. Right. You know, I think we should be more receptive to that. I think there are a lot of food charities in Singapore, Food Bank, and you know, f- uh, Safe Food, uh, and things such organisations and all that. So I think we should take ownership, you know, of the food that we consume and the subsequent waste that we generate. Yeah. Mm. How do you think a recycling food waste culture also can be encouraged here? Because it's not as simple as maybe recycling paper, right? Yeah. Again, it's, it boils down to, you know, our culture perception, uh, you know. You can home. compost food at home. Yeah, you, you know, can do that. You don't have but to throw it all into an industrial mm-hmm. type recycler. Yeah, so it's all down to attitudes, you know. If you could uh, have a compost site just outside your HDB flat, I think it's all about perception, you know. Sometimes people tend to complain of the smell. So that's why people who want to recycle food at their own backyard or right. DIY, they are put off. So these are small things that we could perhaps work on to encourage food recycling from home and within communities. Mm, okay, and how do you think all these messages can come through most effectively? Uh, I'm sure that the survey will really inform some of the outreach efforts. Yeah. But based on what you know and your experience, what do you think is likely to be the best approach? I think the best approach is still going to be Education in schools. In schools, that would be very crucial and important. And then subsequently, there should be some uh, greater awareness on R and D technology available for and funding for uh, organisations, hotels, and F and B outlets to tap on to recycle their food. And I think. It's and maybe they also need to explain to their consumers that just because you don't see the food glistening, it doesn't mean it's bad. Yes, it's a lot of uh, marketing, yeah. outreach, uh, education, and awareness, and how they want to and how they want to sell their food in the right way, and also educating their consumers. I think that's important. Mm. So it's just not going to be a one side fits all approach. I think it's going to take a lot of different policies and programs to solve this. Thank you very much, yeah. Kavit. Kavit Kumar from the Singapore Environment Council joining us today.